So, welcome again. This is a uh, video demonstrating some uh, composite fillings on two central incisors. And, um, you know, I have many different ways of shaping uh, the mesial and distal aspects of teeth. Um, you know, I've got Paladent, I've got Garrison. Um, and um, one thing I use uh, every now and again is just, just, a, just a clear mylar strip or a clear strip. And sometimes, or, or the vast majority of the time, um, it's 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 not really great to get like a nice profile of the tooth. But on occasion, very very rarely, like in this case, it can actually be um, quite a worthwhile thing uh, to, to to use. So um, as you can see here, we are using rubber dam. You know, sometimes when a filling is really, really close to the gum line, a rubber dam can be really, really tough. And if you notice here, I'm using some floss ties. And in this particular case, it's a bit fiddly. Um, the, the the teeth are too close together. I can't quite get the uh, the rubber dam in. So what I'm using is a, is, is a wedge, a small wedge, just to push between the two teeth, just so I can get the floss tie in. So. Essentially what I'm doing here is I am um, placing the floss tie on one of the teeth and then I'm tying it to the dam clamp and what this does is it kind of retracts away uh, some of the gum and um, it's, 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 it's easier then for me to sort of place the, uh, the, the filling and then, and then obviously when you take the floss tie away the gum just sort of settles over that, that edge. So what I've done here is I've tied both of these floss ties to the, uh, the, the, the the frame, the rubber dam frame. You'll notice that when I um, when I did the first floss tie, it was nice and tight. And then when I did the the second floss tie, it made the first one a little bit loose. So you'll notice that when I'm working on a on a on a on a on, on a tooth, I'm drilling up and filling on. I am just tightening the floss tie with my hands just to retract the gum away. So um, I am removing the old filling. Now um, the, 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 the uh, video here footage doesn't give this um, uh, the, the, the darkness of the old filling justice. In fact, when you look at her teeth and um, when she smiled, it, they, they just look a little bit worn and um, just, just, she just didn't like them. And actually it took her um, quite a bit of time to decide that she wanted to replace these fillings because I believe um, that she knew that um, you know removing the filling isn't isn't without its risks so she's decided that she wants to get it sorted and so we're removing those those uh, those fillings here and um, in this case I'm using quite a rough uh, diamond burr here um, I, I, I I can I can see the filling. I can actually see the filling under the scope. And also, sometimes if you um, look outside of the scope, just with your with just with the Mark One eyeball, you can also see it as well. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm tr really trying my best to remove the old filling without touching the underlying tooth, which is a lot easier said than done okay but um here it's almost imperceptible the filling but in in real life y y it was it was pretty obvious essentially so we're a nice clear working field here you know you you get some people who like um, who, who like to do things with that rubber dam usually may uh, use a, an obturgate which is like one of the things that keeps your mouth nice and wide I do use the obturgate every now and again but I, I just I just went on a rubber dam course about five years ago and um, you know what you just, just get yourself on a course and it, just doing fillings like this it's just easier it's just easier um, you know you, you might feel like it's um, it's a bit daunting but at first, your first few cases, you'll you'll you know you'll have sausage fingers. But if if you do this all day every day, it's just easy. Yeah. So I'm using a um, a, a rugby shaped finer uh, grit diamond burr here, and what I'm doing is I am just cleaning up the the cavity a little bit, and I'm also beveling the margins. It's it's a bit difficult to bevel the margin. Um, 
near to the floss tie, near to the gingival margin. You have to be really careful you don't catch the floss tie or the, or the rubber dam. So because um, this is mostly enamel, there's probably a tiny little bit of dent in here, but mostly this is we're bonding to enamel here. Um, I'm going to use um, the etch all over the tooth. And we wash it away, really, really wash it away. I've been told that you wash for as long as the um, the the etch was on. So say you etched it for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, you wash for 20 seconds. I don't know what the evidence is behind that, but you know that's what I've been told. And now I am using bond. I'm using eye bond here. So I'm using uh, I'm using this stuff. What I'm doing is I'm massaging it. Make sure I'm really, really pushing it and massaging it into the cavity. And then air drying it. So, like I say, the, the, the way I'm going to form this tooth today is with a clear strip. Um, again, um, I, to, to get the, the, the clear strip in, I had to use like a little bit of a wedge it just to, uh, sorry, a wedge just to push the, the two teeth apart. The problem with uh, clear strips is that they sometimes create like a, like a, fat, a flat profile, which doesn't always look great. Luckily, in this case, the, um, the 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 cavity is 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 mostly buccal. There's not a lot of distal um, uh, the, the, the distal aspect. Uh, sorry, the mesial aspect of this tooth is um, is 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 intact. Okay, so um, usually, if, um, if 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 it wasn't, um, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't create a nice sort of curved edge, and it, and it would look unnatural. So when, once you've done the filling, it, it probably wouldn't look as great as it, as it would be. So in this case, uh, the measles aspect is 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 still um, present, and I can use that to shape the tooth. And here I am using um, just 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 a flat plastic. I have actually a um, uh, a specific kit uh, for, for 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 composite bonding. Um, and again, it's it's one of those things that my my principal or my uh, my boss. I'm an associate, by the way, uh, a dental practice where I did this filling. Um, it. Uh, in, in in this case, I've decided to purchase these myself. Now, the boss is great, and he and he, and he supports me, gets me a nice TV and things like that. But on occasion, um, I sometimes just 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 buy things for myself, and then that becomes mine, and then other people in the practice don't use it. Um, and these were were not expensive, and they they just. There's just lots of different types of flat plastic. So there's there's a flat plastic which is quite got a, like a broad sort of blade. I've got a smaller one which is slightly flexible, and also I have got a flax um, uh, a, a flat plastic where the, um, the the edge is offset. Now at first when I got these I was thinking I'll, I'll never use that in a million years because it just it's just it just feels weird. But every now and again it, it's it's great for those teeth where it's kind of just um it's, it's kind of like in a in a, in a in a in a in a in a weird position and you kind of have to sort of go like that with your with your with your hand to get the flat plastic on but this one has got like an offset blade it works really really well so here i have um readjusted the, the the clear strip so at first it was there's like a like a dental papilla in, in between the two teeth and it was kind of tucked to the mesial aspect of the upper left one and now I've pulled it out slightly and just re 
moved it over to the other side of the per, uh, the propeller, and again, just same as before, just um, gently um, molding the composite into the tooth. Now I'm using. You noticed that I, I used a little bit of air there. I'm using Signum. Signum. So Signum is kind of like a like a molding um, sort of putty. And um, sorry, I, it's 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 used to coat um, your instruments so you can mold composite a little bit easier. And um, sometimes I put a little bit too much on, and that can make the manipulation of the um, composite a little bit too difficult. So. Um, um, if, if I if, if I put a little bit too too much on, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, bit of air just to blow it away. I'm also not entirely sure um, if it affects the bond of the filling, uh, sorry, the composite um, filling material. If there's too much signum on there, you know, and th th there's no point taking a risk on that. You might as well just blow it away. moving a bit of the excess you know I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best here to, to mold it as much as possible because really the, the best finish you can get with a um, with a filling is when you initially um, uh, form it so as soon as you take a, um, a burr to that tooth unless you are using you know a really really um, you know you're polishing it extensively it will always not look as great so really i mean it, it it sounds really obvious you know but sometimes when we put fillings in we 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 place them in splodge them in you know we, and then and then we polish afterwards and i suppose the issue with that of course is um well the, the great thing about that is you can form it on the fly you know you can um you can you can sort of sculpt it with the um with the with the fast hand piece the problem with that, of course, is that the fit, it's, you've got a poor finish. So you'll get kind of like little bumps and things. And so when, when it's caught in the light, it won't look as, as perfect. And, and then if you try and polish those out, they'll, they'll still be there. Um, another issue as well is if you're trying to form it with the, with the um, fast hand piece, sometimes you, you, might, um, you might not be uh, as perfect with it and you might sort of slip ever so slightly and cause like a little bump in it. And then if you have to add composite to that, um, to that original composite that's laid down, you'll get like a kind of um, like a patchwork. And over a very, very long period of time, say they come back in 12 months time, you'll notice that those sort of um, places where it's where you've had the two uh, restorations will, there'll be like a, a, a minute kind of crack and that will uh, collect um, staining so it, over a very very long period of time it will look great so here I'm using my trusty Diora stone um, I think these are great. You know, I used to use a um, a, a diamond. Um, it's like a it's like a diamond torpedo. You'll see it in a minute. A, a red, like a red one. So it's a, it's not a fine fine grit, but it's a it's like a like a smooth grit. And um, sometimes it, it's it's nice to use because you do want to take a lot away, and you don't want to um, you know d d take too much away. You would with a rough coarse diamond burr. But um, again, it causes those kind of micro um, sort of peaks and troughs, which doesn't look great when you start to try and polish it away. So I'm using, um, this is a very, very, very fine um, polishing burr. And you'll, you'll also notice this polishing burr is um, is quite worn and I, and I just kind of like it because it takes hardly anything away. You'll also notice that the, the clear strip hasn't, it hasn't done the perfect mesial margin here. And on the upper left one, there's a small, ever, ever so slight ledge. Um, and luckily, because the, the mesial uh, surface of the, this tooth was intact, it was just kind of like a little kind of, um, how can I say it? It's just like a kind of like a bubble of 
of, of composite that 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 just needs to be polished away so it's not it's not too bad of course if this um, if they're hot if a, if, a, if, a, if a significant amount of the mesial margin was missing doing that would create like a flatness to it and it, and it wouldn't look uh, natural so I'm removing the floss ties here um, I think I struggle with this I think I remember me trying to struggle with this and um, I had to get Paris's to cut it off but luckily yeah it's off so overall it's moment in time I'm, I'm pretty happy with the polish um, I am I am gonna take the rubber dam off and and, and have um, a final look I think I'm also gonna have a little look at the mesial aspect of this tooth as well so um, when I pulled the dam off, um, I left a little bit of the dam behind. And also as well, there is um, a very, very small amount of flash where the bond had sort of collected underneath the dam. And um, I really, really, really like sickle scalers in this case. I think that's a skill or is that secure? I can't remember. Um, I'm not a perio bod, sorry. Um, and th these are great to take away uh, what, what I'm using for here, but, but also it's great for when you're doing a posterior uh, composite. So I'm using a little bit of a wedge here to remove uh, the uh, remaining rubber dam. So yeah, I'll use that instrument to um, sort of put the paladent sort of sectional matrix on, create a wall, and then use that instrument just to sort of um, uh, get rid of the flash, if that's what the word is. And here I'm just using um, uh, like a coarse grit uh, profi paste just to give the tooth a really, really, really deep polish. You know, and it just just looks great. You know, if, if if you're doing that without a rubber dam and the patients are closing their mouth all the time and it's just a pain in the backside. And this is what's great about using rubber dam. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any comments regarding this uh, video or, you know, you want to have a little chin wag or anything, please, please comment on the um, video below. And thank you.